final economy of tomorrow. The most convincing myth of all is that quantitative easing helped increase bank credit to consumers and businesses by expanding the monetary base. It's not true, and I will prove it in the next few slides. This chart shows you that the volume of commercial and industrial loans in the United States, i.e. the loans used to create real value in the economy, remains below 2008 levels, despite the $2 trillion of new cash pumped into financial institutions since then. Yes, the amount did seem to recover a, a bit, but this has happened in the past, even when there was no QE. In any case, the recovery was not proportionate to the Fed's ginormous amount of QE. That's not all. This chart shows you that the, the Fed's money multiplier from 1984 till present. The money multiplier is the ratio of M1 to the monetary base. In other words, it shows how fast credit is being created from the monetary base. It was as high as three times 30 years ago. But as you can see, the ratio fell below 1 in 2008, and it has remained around that level for nearly four years now. This means that the money supply, which consists of money and credit, is actually less than the entire monetary base. How is it possible? Doesn't, doesn't money always go somewhere? Not in a fiat money system. In the fiat money system, money can disappear just like it came from nowhere. This happens because of the fractional reserve banking. Based on the fractional reserve system, banks could lend up to 10 times their cash reserves. When they do lend, this increases the money supply a lot. But when banks redeem loans or write, off, write them off, money supply shrinks as fast as it grows. And banks are not making a lot of new loans today, while they're redeeming their existing loans. But they do have the cash from selling US treasuries, right? If they're not lending it, where is that all cash sitting then? Some of it is sitting in corporate bonds, equities and commodities, but not as much as you may think. Here's where, where 4 out of 5 new QE dollars are sitting. The QE money is sitting as excess reserves with the Fed and it's earning 0% interest for the banks. Excess reserves represent the amount of funds, helped by a, funds held by a depository institution in its account at the Federal Reserve Bank, in excess of its required reserve balance and its contractual clearing balance. Excess reserves equals equal total reserves less required reserves. In other words, banks have sold their government bonds and parked 80% of their cash back with the Fed. So the net effect of the QE was minimal. That's the reason we did not experience hyperinflation. As the chart illustrates, nearly $1.6 trillion out of the $2 trillion QE have been deposited back with the Fed, simply because banks either don't want to lend or they can't find creditworthy customers. In sum, the QE programs have failed to create new lending and any quantitative easing programs in future may yield similar results. What the economy needs is a strong demand and a desire to make things again. And you only get there by cutting taxes and creating free market conditions. Subscribe and stay tuned.